many seeming to be pretty bullish about the NSC for this year. But this after investors lost 1.97 trillion naira in the nation's stock market last year. So in your view, just how sustainable is the run we're seeing so far? Yeah, Alicia, I want to start by saying Happy New Year. And the Nigeria market have started this year in a very positive note. And um, we are, we are almost everybody is a little bit excited about the market at the moment. But um, like you see, how sustainable is this, um, you know, this current rally that we are seeing? Uh, I think for the short time, it might be very sustainable. But at the long time, we don't really know the direction of the market at the moment um, because um, some of these um, um, stock prices have been selling at a bargain price since the last quarter of last year. And I think investors are beginning to take position. They are beginning to have um, confidence, mostly that um, now we know that banks have made them um, all the provision that they need to make. And the way forward is that they can only be um, their earnings and everything. We expect it to be very better knowing that when banks control a larger hold in the, uh, um, the Nigeria Stock Exchange. So going forward, there is um, probability that um, the market will, will perform better than what we saw last year. Well, what's interesting is that there's still a lot of uh, nervousness regarding the health of Nigeria's President Omar Yaradua, yet markets aren't showing much reaction to some of the developments we're seeing on the political front. Now, we have a situation where we've got Nigerian Vice President Good, uh, Goodluck Jonathan having taken over uh, the ceremonial duties over in Nigeria. We know, though, that his ethnic and regional mix uh, uh, is a strong contention, and the political wrangling that could result uh, is possibly going to be intense moving forward. What political risk is the markets facing at this stage? <laughs> Alicia, um, politically, we could say there's a vacuum because um, if you have a sitting president not been around for the past 51 days, and you begin to wonder who, who is the captain of the ship. And, um, but I think going forward, uh, luckily yesterday we had the president uh, talk and uh, promising Nigerians that um, very soon he will be back in the country. Then the economic team are not actually sleeping. Um, the Minister of Finance, they are all around working around the clock. And um, even the, 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 the Nigerian Stock Exchange, the Central Bank Governor. I think um, what will happen is when we centralize everything around one man, then there will be a problem. But we have a system. So I think the system is still moving. Maybe not moving as fast as we expect. But I believe the system is still moving. It, 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 you could amazing that the president has not been around for the past 51 days, and um, some sectors are moving. Some sectors that have been bad before he left are still bad. Those that are good are still good. So looking at it, sometimes politically, we are not in too much risk because we are not in turmoil. We are not in these politicians. They always do their intrigues. Businessmen always do their business. I think in Nigeria we have a very um, unique type of system whereby a politician goes about doing their politicking, businessmen go about doing their business. And from what you've seen in the ocean, in the Nigerian Stock Exchange, you realize that um, the market is bigger than anybody at the moment. At the moment, worst case scenario moving forward, especially for the two sectors that stand in the spotlight, Mukta. We're looking at the oil sector that uh, has seen some reform being initiated and the banking sector as well. What's your outlook as far as a worst case scenario is concerned? Well, a worst case scenario at the moment is like the oil sector bill, if the National Assembly passes it into law. Who will sign it if the president is still not back? Um, the CBN is trying to set up an assets management company. If the uh, Nigerian House passed it, who will sign it into law? So we will have a problem then. But strongly, I think Nigeria will have a way of going around the situation. Remember, the budget is still there, has not been passed. Even if it is passed, it's going to sign it. I remember the supplementary budget was taken all the way from Nigeria to Saudi Arabia for the president to sign on his seedbed. So it's possible that when all these things are done, we have a way of communication, we take it to Saudi Arabia for him to sign. <laughs> so I don't think there's any political risks, strong political risks at the moment. But the only thing is the politicians have to be upright. They have to come out. 
They should know that about 150 million Nigerians are suffering. They should know that we need direction. They should know that they should take away politics from the means of the economy and do what is right. The right thing at the moment is for the government to hand over to an acting president. And we believe strongly that in the soonest possible time, if the president doesn't come back, I actually think the next January, February, this first quarter, is going to determine the political stability mm -hmm. of Nigeria or otherwise. I think we just have to keep our hands crossing and watch mm -hmm. how scenario unfold during the first quarter. But I know that patient is running out. Well, Something has to be done. Well, certainly, as you're saying, in the meantime, we've got things ticking nicely along in the banking space. Uh, Mukta, we've heard that the CBN is looking to categorize banks along markets, regions and sectors to actually serve the economy uh, better moving forward. Market reaction to that news? Yes, strong market reaction to that news um, for the past um, a week before the, I mean, towards the last quarter of the year, um, last day of the year, uh, a bank like Oceanic Bank has been on beat, Unity Bank being on beat, um, uh, Bank PHB being on beat, First Inland Bank being on beat. These are banks that were rescued by the government. So we begin to see positive, we begin to see intense stuff and um, trying to, to the moving forward, we begin to see a little bit of um, confidence in the banking sector. We begin to look forward to seeing foreign investors coming in to take over most of all these um, distressed banks like the CBN governor said. And uh, when you look at the scenario, uh, Alicia, a bank that made a loss of over 400 and something billion is still in business then you know that there is something good about those banks. So let's watch and see as the CBN is coming out with policies. My own take is that the policy makers, do they carry the stakeholders along? Yeah. That is the problem that we have. Remember, before the CBN government came in, the market was going towards stability. Immediately it came in with its rescue plan, the market went down and the market have not recovered from that shock. Very quickly, and I hope this year, yeah. The the, 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 the the economic team, the CBN government, will take the stakeholders around, bring out policy that will help the market, that will help Nigeria generally, and take away any political intrigue or political undertone and be very transparent. And I believe strongly that this year, the Nigerian economy is going to move forward and the Nigerian stock market is going to be bullish. I can categorically say so. Uh, Mukta, very briefly, I mean, uh, what the categorization means, though, is that the CBN might eventually come up with banks that will address just the middle markets, the country's regions, uh, specific sectors of the economy, such as agriculture, or operating investment banks, for example. Uh, surely this would see an uneven playing field moving forward. I mean, uh, you know, who's going to be taking opportunity where? Do you see that influence the kind of earnings from these uh, respective banks moving forward? Yes. Uh, Alicia, you shouldn't forget that I keep saying the Nigerian economy still leads a lot of these banks. If you look at the agricultural sector, about 200 billion were released to some banks. Until today, this money has not found its hands into the right people. And you look at the power sector, you look at, you just talked about the petroleum bill. You see, there are a lot of opportunities. No matter the sector, no matter the tier, no matter the kind of fund funding this bank decides to take, they will definitely come out with good earnings because there is a lot of opportunities for them to do not short-time funding. That's on that thing. We need to look at the long-time funding of all these sectors. Yeah. If the banks are able to give long-time loan then begin to increase their earnings gradually. I personally think that we will be heading forward. The last time we had a growth, we had short-time growth, boost by manipulation, boost by quick endings, mm -hmm. boost by competition, unhealthy competition. But when we have banks distributing themselves into sector, we'll have what we call healthy competition that will be good for the market, and that way we'll move forward.